for 28 movies. Only one character has taken on many roles in his own franchise. Hero, Villain, Guardian, Destroyer, Savior, Flyer, Dancer, but most of all, a god. I'm talking about Mothra, by the way. <laughs> Just kidding. Godzilla. Oh boy. So, full disclosure, I haven't seen all 28 Godzilla movies. I may have seen maybe half of them. Not quite sure. I do want to see all of them. Kind of reminds me of the uh, the James Bond movies. It's take It took me forever to watch all of those films. But while those films are readily available, uh, with Godzilla... It's that's like it's a rights nightmare. I mean, it's it's you you it's hard to find certain ones. Like the one I want to see the most is Godzilla versus Biollante, and yet I totally missed the out, like missed the boat on when it came out on Blu-ray for like super cheap, and now it's expensive. It's like an arm and a leg just to get it. I wasn't about to buy like the, the monster movie three pack that came with Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus and I don't know Mega Piranha or something like that. But then I found out all the movies are one are on one disc and it takes out the Japanese track. Oh boy. Uh, well, I hope they do like a re-release or something like that because I can't. I, I want to watch it. I mean, it's everything I've heard. It sounds great. But the films I have seen. Yeah, they're, they're they're pretty awesome. Although, though, to be fair, I mean, I haven't seen some of his worst stuff, like Godzilla vs. Megalon, where he teams up with Jack Jaguar, and he does that really cool-looking <laughs> super kick, or the one where he dances around, or things like that. I've only seen like clips on like YouTube, but I want to see like the whole movies because they 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 seem they seem great, even though they're probably terrible. And, but, of course, uh, as a kid, I saw the original Roland Emmerich Godzilla movie, you know, who, who didn't? Uh, but uh, as a kid, I was like, yeah, this is cool! Nowadays, I'm like, yeah, this is whatever kind of thing. I mean, it's a decent monster movie. It's not a great Godzilla movie, but, you know, that's neither here or there. And in Final Wars, he gets his ass kicked by the real Godzilla, which is awesome. But... Uh, yeah, let's talk about this Godzilla movie, shall we? I've been waiting for a new Godzilla movie ever since uh, Final Wars came out. And knowing that that was going to be the last film from Toho, at least for a while, I did think to myself, I wonder when America is going to try again. You know, maybe they'll learn from their mistakes and actually try to make an actual Godzilla movie rather than a lizard running around the city laying eggs and stuff. You know, and then sure enough, they announced a new Godzilla movie, and it was going to be directed by a guy that made uh that made uh, monsters, uh the Gareth Edwards, I believe. I almost keep trying to say Gareth Evans, but then I was like, wait, that's the director of the Raid. Oh my God! Imagine the Raid director did a Godzilla movie. Godzilla would be breaking bones like every monster. Bro- It'd be like Godzilla Final Wars all over again, only the action sequences would be much more elaborate and brutal and stuff. But anyway, whatever. Um, so that got me excited. And what got me excited even more was that they were going to stick to kind of the tone or the spirit of the original 1954 version. And that got me excited, but there was one problem. I actually didn't see or haven't hadn't seen the original 1954 version yet. But I did earlier this week when the, the theater I go to, the Arclight, was showing a special screening of the original. So me and a friend of mine booked it over there and watched it. And it was fantastic. And so that got me, like, really hyped up for the newest one. And so last night, me, me and the friend of mine, we went over to the Arclight where they're showing the film in Dolby Atmos in 2D. And oh, my God. <laughs> Oh boy, let me tell you right now, this movie is awesome. (laughs) Like, you could just stop the review right here, because that's like, that's like my, like, the final word. It's awesome. Like, if there was like a, 
I'm sure that that word is going to be on the TV spots or something like that from some other critic, but believe it. So the lowdown is that, uh, like in 1999, uh, Dr. Sarazawa, which is, uh, either a reference to the original movie or he's an actual character that, that is connect somehow connected to the Dr. Sarazawa in the original movie. They find, uh, an unhatched like pod in a cave that also had like a bunch of, uh, bones of like a huge dinosaur like creature they don't they're not sure if it's Godzilla but they have their doubts and um but then like meanwhile in Tokyo there's this big nuclear power plant disaster and Brian Cranston who who uh who plays a guy named Joe Brody he loses his wife and then 15 years later he's now like everyone thinks he's a kook but his son uh, tries to get, get or gets him out of uh, jail, and but but Joe is still like no, there's something out there, and his son Ford is like, fine, we'll 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 do it your way, we'll check it out, and then everything begins to unravel, or or they begin to discover that there is that it wasn't just a nuclear meltdown, or it wasn't just a disaster, it was something much bigger than that, and it was. And they find, and so monsters get unleashed, and the only one that could save everybody is not the military, but another monster, and it's Godzilla. One of the things I really liked about this movie was that it didn't it didn't try to be like like the 1954 version. It didn't try to have like an anti um, like nuclear message and, and and stuff, it actually played up more on the mythical aspect of Godzilla, like he's a, a guardian of Earth, not necessarily a guardian of people, because so there are times where you almost think to yourself, well, he doesn't really care about people. He cares about the planet because that's where he lives, that's where he sleeps. If you destroy it, then he's he's not gonna be happy about it. So he sees the monsters as less of a threat to the people but a threat to just his, his him like like what the hell are you two doing here i'm going to kick your ass <laughs> and that's pretty much what godzilla is like in this movie and if you read some early reviews yes there isn't a lot of godzilla in the movie there's maybe like 20 25 minutes of screen time for godzilla and even then, it's it's a uh, very they, they they try to go with a very like um, I won't want to say realistic aspect with it, but it, it, that might be the most correct word I could use. Where you see him like from the people's perspective, or when they're running away from him, or you see them in the background and stuff. But what Gareth Evans, uh, oh God, um, what Gareth Edwards does is that he plays things really close to the chest in terms of showing the battle because there isn't a full-on monster battle until the last 30 minutes of the movie and even then it's intercut with what the humans are up to um but i thought the very the slow build like the first hour you don't see godzilla for a good hour of the movie you hear about him and you see glimpses but you don't see him in all his glory until maybe an hour into the movie the first fight you barely see because uh, he shows up everyone's going nuts and he roars at the camera and then it cuts to a news program that briefly shows the fight everyone going oh my god oh my god he's fighting another monster and the kids watching the TV going mommy dinosaur and that's that's the scene like the next day that everything's ruined everyone's like oh man he destroyed everything what do we do <laughs> and that's pretty much how it is until the last act of the movie, you actually see more of the villains, the more of the monsters, the other monsters than you do Godzilla, which I think worked for me in the sense that in the old Godzilla movies, the fights would go on for a really long time with the human just staying there and working out their own plot stuff until Godzilla finally wins at something. In this one, there's a lot of uh, fighting and running away, fighting and running away kind of thing and if we if we had like five minute sec segments of that happening it would almost be kind of boring where when we got to that last fight 
we would be desensitized by it and the critics would be giving it bad reviews saying oh it's nothing but cg destruction porn you know those people Ugh. but uh, i mean i would enjoy it <laughs> but <laughs> i would, I mean, most likely i'd enjoy it but other people wouldn't so but uh, but i i did think doing this like showing very very small snippets of the previous battle before going all out with the last one was really cool i liked it It still kept the suspense going the pace was still great and I, and i loved it now if there's one aspect of the movie that i sort of agree with critics on is the human element now compared to other godzilla movies they're it, it's great <laughs> compared to the others uh but there might have been maybe like a little bit too much of it I mean, I know in the original Godzilla movie, there's more humans than there's Godzilla, but that movie's 20 minutes shorter than this one. And it's all very uh, predictable, very uh, Spielbergian-esque in terms of delivery. It's very much, the movie is very much treated like a disaster movie kind of thing. But while Roland Emmerich's version also attempted to make a disaster movie of Godzilla and didn't do a great job at it, this one does it well but maybe they could have cut down a little bit on it. The human characters, are, are, are they're, they're, they're fine, but they're numerous. Uh, but they're played by great actors. Brian Cranston's great. Aaron Taylor Johnson is good. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen, though her role is a little bit thankless, she's she's more like, ah, she's like the, the screaming lady, screaming, crying lady. Uh, she does a fine job. Uh, Ken Watanabe's good. Sally Hawkins is underused, though you know, she's fine. But but it does it it will it probably will get to a point where you're wondering you know maybe we would like a couple more minutes of Godzilla doing something, but like I said the third act it when 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 the film decides okay we've had enough of teasing you we're gonna show you the fight then it's like okay this is all worth it <laughs> this is this is worth it. Fantastic, 10 out of 10, all the Oscars, and give them all the awards. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like my, my final rating isn't a 10 out of 10. I, I Overall, I think this movie is, is great. It's a, it's a great monster movie. It's a great Godzilla movie. It's got a great score, too. Um, though though I, I see a lot of complaints about the score saying it's too uh, cheesy or too monster movie-esque. Well, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's Godzilla. It's a monster movie. Though I would have, would I have liked to see the original theme somewhere in there? I kind of heard a little bit, a little motif in there. Like it's the, there's a little bit of the theme at one point of the movie, though it doesn't go all the way. It, it is noticeable though. But it, it kind of reminded me of like old school Danny Elfman, uh, a little bit. Uh, um, think um, the Mars Attacks score. Like the main theme of Godzilla almost sounds like Mars Attacks. And I love Mars Attacks. I love the theme of Mars Attacks. And I love the theme of this Godzilla. <laughs> so with all that being said, you know, great action. Godzilla's awesome. The monsters are awesome. Human element, while a little much, isn't that bad to detract too much from the movie. Uh, when all is said and done, I would probably have to give this movie a 9 out of 10. Go see it. Even if you're not a Godzilla fan, you'll probably still enjoy it. It's got a good slow build to it and then when it once it gets to that ending you're like all right it was all totally worth it kind of thing but if you if you don't like movies that have like a slow build to it if you if you prefer your movies to be like transformers and there's nothing wrong with that i mean i'm just gonna go out and say it there's nothing wrong with liking a film that has a pace like a michael bay transformers kind of deal i'm not gonna be like the critics that uh, that just compare like every action movie to michael bay i mean look back on all the big action movies that have come out uh, Man of Steel, Pacific Rim, Captain America. Uh, you're going to find reviews that either say, This is how it's done, Michael Bay. You're stupid. Or, This movie is too much like a Michael Bay movie. It's stupid. The guy has so much hate on him already. There's really nothing more you can do to try to make him look bad. In the eyes of film critics and film historians and teachers everywhere, he already looks bad. You can tell he looks bad when Dark of the Moon is put on display for the visual effects Oscar and no one applauds when they show clips from it. There's really nothing more he can do. But enough about my rant about people and their attitude towards Michael Bay, because this is Godzilla.
if you prefer a movie like Transformers, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with that, you might not enjoy Godzilla that much, but you just might. If you, but if you really like movies that have like a slow build until you get to the end where you see it all in its glory, kind of like Jaws, you know, let's say it's like this movie is like the the, Godz- the Jaws of Godzilla movies. If you like that kind of pacing, you, yeah, you'll you'll enjoy this movie a lot. Go see it. I recommend it. Maybe one day Guillermo del Toro will do a Pacific Rim cross Godzilla thing. We'll get the ultimate battle of Me- Kaiju versus Mecha. That would be great. Anyway, thanks for uh, listening, and maybe I'll do this again some other time with another movie. We'll see. See ya.